Good morning, English 11. Happy uh, final day of school. Mr. Johnson here. One last time uh, with, with one more, just one more poem. Uh, so today um, we're going to read a poem by a man named Juan Felipe Herrera. Um, and I've actually uh, met this guy. And as a matter of fact, just full disclosure, I've met all of the poets that um, I've talked about over the course of this week. Um, just because uh, my dad runs a poetry program up at his college. He's also an English teacher. He works at um, Central Lakes College in Brainerd. So, um, yeah, so I've met a lot of poets, and, and um, I've met a lot of different types of poets. Um, but some poets stand out in your mind more than others, and, and for a variety of different reasons. So um, when I met uh, Juan Felipe Herrera, um, I was struck immediately by just how, how genuine he is, and just how kind he is. And his poetry is honestly uh, uh, just as genuine, just, just as, as honest as he is, but it's, it's, it can be a little bit complicated. So I have a poem for you, and it's really short. It's the shortest thing that I think I've, I've given to you, but I, I don't want this lesson to be difficult, and I want to just, I, I just get you off to summer as quickly as possible. So it's only six lines long, and um, I, I think we can get through it pretty quickly. So this poem is called Five Directions to My House. And, and you might have noticed the other thing about Juan Felipe Herrera is that, um, uh, you know, he's, he's a, a, a Latino writer. So, so I want to highlight just different, uh, di different writers, a variety of different writers, because that's what America looks like, right? It, it's not all white people in suburbs. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a huge variety. If you, if you get out there and if you start taking road trips and if you start really living in the world as you, as you will in just a few short years, you'll be off on your own. Um, I think you'll start to start to realize that that uh, America takes many forms, and that's part of what makes it so awesome. But uh, you know, so so yeah, part of part of the way to experience that I think is through poetry, because then you can start to um, experience emotions through through the eyes of other people, or at least through the words of of other people. Um, I'm just going to read you the poem, and then I'll ask you the same questions that I've asked all week. What is your emotional reaction to this poem? And then, uh, uh, does it remind you of your own personal experience? And uh, this poem is, is dense and difficult, so I do my best at the end of this to explain it as well. Five Directions to My House by Juan Felipe Herrera. Go back to the grain yellow hills where the broken speak of elegance. Walk up to the canvas door, the short bed stretched against the clouds. Beneath the earth, an ant writes with the grace of governor. Blow, blow, red-tailed hawk, your hidden sleeve, your desert secrets. You are there, almost, without a name, without a body. Go now. I said five. Said five like a guitar says six. Okay. So I think the key to this poem is to realize that it's like directions. But it's also totally not like directions, right? So when I when I when I say, okay, you know, you got to get to my house from Andover, you're gonna you're gonna kind of head up Highway 10, then you're gonna cut over on 169, and you're gonna follow that all the way up to New Hope. You know, that that's kind of that's kind of where uh, uh, directions tend to go. They tend to be super literal, right? These directions kind of start that way, but then they get abstract and uh, kind of metaphorical really fast. So if you look at that first line, go back to the grain yellow hills with the broken speak of elegance, that starts out with geography, kind of. We're talking about grain yellow hills. And then it goes into this, this kind of, uh, like it still could be a place, but it's a place that's identified a little bit strangely, where the broken speak of elegance. What kind of place is that, right? Where, where, where are we talking about here? Broken people, I imagine, where they speak of elegance, so, so maybe they're Maybe they're impoverished in some way. It just kind of sets you on edge. It's a, it's a, you know, do you want to really go to this place, this man's house? Well, of course you do. You're going to keep reading, right? And, and then we, we get on to the second line, walk up to the canvas door. What kind of, what kind of door is canvas? Well, it could be a tent. Like, what, what are we talking about here, right? Uh, that's, that's a strange way to describe a house uh, by its door and, and the fabric or, of that door. The short bed stretched against the clouds. Are we talking about outside? What are we talking about here? What kind of house is this? What kind of place is this? And um, uh, that's, that's how you should feel about it. You should be a little bit, uh, not concerned, but, but just wary. What kind of place is this? Where is this poem going ge geographically? Beneath the earth, an ant writes with the grace of a governor. 
blow, blow, red tail hawk, your hidden sleeve, your desert secrets. Now we're kind of starting uh, to talk about um, uh, it's like a, a different, we're describing the landscape still, but we're also pulling in some, some, some specific um, place, uh, places or, or just, just specific things that are specific to places. Um, and, and it might be helpful for you to realize now that this, is, this was published by the University of Arizona Press. So, so you can get the sense that maybe he's talking about the American Southwest. Um, and if you're aware of the history there, now you're starting to kind of get his message a little bit. Where is his home? Where is his house? My house, five directions to it. Well, it's not just a geographical location. It's, it's much bigger than that, both in terms of, of an entire people, but also an entire geography, an entire physical location that's just beyond like one man's house. You said there, almost without a name, without a body, go now. And then the final direction is six, where he kind of breaks this rule. He said he was going to give you five, and it's kind of like a little wink-wink inside joke. I was going to give you five directions, but there's actually six directions if you want to get to my house. I said five. I said five, like a guitar says six. Okay, what does he mean by that? Well, a guitar has six strings, right? And if you pluck them all individually, you're going to get just the six notes. And so if, you, if you're looking for standard directions, and there are five items in that list of directions, well, then you can expect that each... That's all it's going to be, right? One note, one direction for each line. But if you play a guitar, and if you, if you know how guitars are played, depending on where you put your fingers in the strings, there's going to be a whole variety of different possible notes that can be expressed and, and played um, uh, with the guitar, right? So six strings, like a billion notes, right? I don't know the theoretical maximum of that, but, but you get the idea, right? So he's saying, look, there are five directions to this poem, but there's actually way more direction here in this poem. There's a whole symphony of sound, right? And that's what he's trying to express. These directions are a lot bigger than just to my house. I'm pointing you in the direction of, uh, uh, of a whole group of people, of an entire history um, that, is, that is, has, has maybe even yet to be written. And that, that's a poem right there, right? Um, at least that's my interpretation of it. Please, if, if you see that there's an error in my, in my interpretation, try to correct it and, and try, to, try to come up with your own interpretation. Poetry is kind of like that. There are many wrong interpretations, and you're not guaranteed to get it right on the first, the second, the third, uh, fourth even reading of it. But that is what's great about poetry as well. In a few lines, you can put and embed a lot of meaning. That's it for the entire trimester. It's been a pleasure. Uh, being your teacher from home. I hope my dog wasn't too loud. He's chewing on an antler right now. You want to see that? Of course you do. Okay. Yeah, here he is. One second, one second. There he is. He's chewing on stuff. Sitting in a shaft of sunlight. It might be too bright. It might be too bright. One second. Let me fix this for you. I promise you guys, I'm going to make a vlog about this at some point. Here he is. There he is. He's pretty cute, you know. He's doing random stuff. Anyway, I'll make a vlog about him at some point, but that's it for, for English content for, for my channel. Um, have a great summer, everybody.